Hey, welcome to the second live stream for the Action Chronicles. Uh, I am Luke Bowen, the executive producer, writer of uh, Action Chronicles. I'm joined with Dylan, uh, going, who's off, off screen. Off screen. Hey, Sean <laughs> is off screen as well. Sorry, we're waiting on, I have a little technical difficulty right now. We're waiting on a, a camera uh, to come up here. But for right now, it's, uh, it's me, <laughs> and I'm going to kind of open this up. Um, uh, Dylan is... Uh, art director, producer, uh, slash writer, creator, all these things. Uh, Sean is director, editor, writer as well. Uh, and who, Coben is not with us tonight. Coben Arudis, she got sick uh, last minute and could not make it. Um, Coben is producer, writer, creator as well. Um, and um, he will be missed tonight for sure. But um, we are so excited to tell you more about the Action Chronicles and uh, to share some of our inspirations and dive into uh, what the characters in the world of Axiom uh, is it really about? I will answer questions at the end, so feel free to, to stick, uh, stick around. Uh, leave your questions in the comment in the chat. Um, we'd love to hear from you guys. And um, and then this this is your first time hearing about the series. Um, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, there's a brief overview of like what Axiom is. Uh, because we don't have three cameras, I'm going to kind of just take a stab and do this. Yeah, because usually this is like, okay, I'm going to send it over to you guys. But because we have one camera, I'm going to do that. So Axiom Chronicles is a sci-fi animated action adventure series about a team boy named Rake who was chosen by a cosmic power to save his people and the planet from an evil force of robots called the Mechno Hive. And uh, it's a, a super cool animated sci-fi of thing that we've been working on for a long time it takes place on this desert planet which we're going to talk about today and these characters uh we've been totally influenced and when we get to the wide angle you're going to see toys on the desk here <laughs> inspiration that we've drawn from over the years um but for now to kick this off we really want to show you uh, a trailer that we've been working on uh, that we just released this last week and so we're super excited for you to watch this and uh and just a little teaser we actually have another finished piece of animation we're going to show you later on and it kind of talks about the world and unpacks that a little bit so you can kind of see the history and where this whole thing takes place it's just really cool so for now though let's kick it off with a uh trailer uh, of that we've been working on I know what you're thinking. This doesn't look like it's going to end well. And you know what? You might be right. But I've been through a lot worse. Maybe not this bad, but still pretty bad. My name is Rake. As a baby, the Mechnohive took me from my parents. I was raised in Power City by the cyborgs. They manipulated me into their own image, trained me as a weapon. They made me do terrible things. Eventually, I was ordered to gather organics to populate the Mechnohive's labor camps. Everything changed when I watched a driver bot tear a baby from its mother's arms, and then turn its whip on her. Awakening a voice inside me I'd never heard before. That voice told me to defend them. All of them. In that moment, I broke every rule I was taught to obey. I knew the hive would come after me, so I ran. They hunted me, but I made it out. It's been a crazy ride to get to this point. I've made great friends, I've found my family, and most importantly, 
I've been called to my true purpose. If you told the old me that it would be my job to free the organics and save the planet, I would have laughed in your face and probably arrested you. But now I know, it has always been my fate. So there we go. All right, we got camera up. We're working on mics next, guys. So uh, for now, I'm going to keep talking. Um, yeah, we're back. Yeah. Uh, so um, to kind of introduce this thing, we got to talk about uh, where we're at with this whole process, uh, which is the testing the waters phase. And you might be asking, what's that? Um, we're super passionate about this project, and uh, but we can't do it without, without your support. Uh, we have partnered with Angel Studios and we're gauging interest in this project. So if this is a show that you would like to, to be made, you can express interest by going to angel.com forward slash uh, Axiom. It's a tame one for the that, first time. That's tame. That's <laughs> tame. <laughs> we'll get there. I'm, I'm working my way up. Yeah. Uh, this will allow us to see if people are interested in helping us fund this show. Uh, if we... Uh, if we were to open a crowdfund, many films and series like The Chosen, The Wing Feather Saga, or The Sound of Freedom started this way. Um, if you feel that the time is right and, and the interest is there, we'll open up to crowdfunding rounds so you can invest in this project and actually own equity stock in this project, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, so express interest now and be the first to know uh, if we open a crowdfund. Uh, again, that's angel.com forward slash axiom. We so, uh, so yeah, um, Garrett, uh, it wouldn't be best if I use the mic on my laptop. I'm just going to be kind of open about that. <laughs> if we all want to talk. Like, okay. Okay. Um, so to start off with, um, I'd like to kind of talk a little bit about some of our inspirations that we've had over the years. Um, and kind of where this whole thing kind of started in terms of, um, you know, where, uh, how we grew up and the things that really inspired us. And obviously Dylan's going to speak a lot into this today because mm -hmm. <laughs> this came from uh, his left hand, as we sure. <laughs> like right. to say, um, his, his left hand. So, um, but anyway, we, I don't know, Garrett, if you have those clips from, um, Samurai Jack and Clone Wars, but those are two big inspirations yeah, here. Good starting point for sure. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about some sure. of that stuff? Sure, yeah. Um, so yeah, the I always say this. I mean, every time anyone's come up to us and you know has been like, you know, this is great. This looks amazing. This is you know familiar, but kind of interesting and unique at the same time, and all this stuff. And it looks like Star Wars, and it looks like Samurai Jack. I'm always like, well, this is 100% my love letter to oh. Samurai Jack, for sure. Like, that's my shorthand answer for a lot of that stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I grew up in the early 2000s watching things like Dexter's Lab, Samurai Jack, Powerpuff Girls, Clone Wars, like the, the 2003, which so yeah, before the 3D one, um, that might date myself a little bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But yeah, like seeing those, you know, the shape language and all of the, you know, these very sharp and interesting hard lines to these characters that, you know, we don't really see much anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's, again, we've been to a few different places in California and stuff like that with Axiom and it's across the board's always been like, wow, this is, this looks different yeah. in a good way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's like my, I would say 100% my, uh, 
the the genesis of the style and you know the looks and so yeah what you're seeing here is clone wars Gandhi tartakovsky's yeah. clone wars yeah that came out in the early 2000s um just we we reference this scene in particular all oh, yeah. the time when we're talking mm -hmm. about action sequences and whatnot yeah and how how much we admire his work and whatnot for like how short those those little clips are i mean the, the i think they're like maybe a three minute long you know episodes if you were mini episodes but those are like seriously like master classes and <laughs> very effective storytelling in a very small amount of time which yeah. is kind of rad yeah so yeah good Absolutely. good reference points yeah, yeah. oh for sure i love it um so i think honestly we just want to hear from you guys too later on with yeah. the questions like what were some of your inspirations growing up like what cartoons do you remember so vividly as that like made an impact on you and uh, I think that would be really cool to hear from you guys. Uh, but that's later on. Uh, just kind of remember that. And we'll, when we come back around to the questions, we'd love to hear from you guys and hear what shows made an impact on you. Sean's like our like connoisseur. Sean and Coben, actually, both of them are about like obscure 80s cartoons. Yeah. yeah. Totally. And Sean has a gift to like remember the theme songs from them, like it's, almost like it's word really, for really word. Gross. It's really It's kind <laughs> of disgusting. Like, like, uh, um, what's the the one that I I love so much is Bionic Six. It's mm -hmm. like it's like a family of like we, like a um, Bionic <laughs> robot family, yeah, and they're like sure. all adopted. But then there's also like like Dino Saucers, which is is which is a great, amazing like <laughs> Wait, there's, song. There's, I don't remember like, that. Di there's a show called Dino Saucers. Dino Saucers. Oh, he knows like it's 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 really really strange like there's dinosaurs that came from space and gave like all these like teenagers rings of course and they yeah, yeah. i mean uh, it's yeah. it's obviously like what 80s <laughs> cartoons are all about but yeah. um those are definitely the inspiration that we we draw from in in terms of the, the action chronicles but uh, who knows i don't know yeah i love it it's weird but oh, should we Weird should we address point. like Coben being missing? Like, I know, we did, right? We yeah, did, I mean, like do a little thing. But. I mean, he's he's he is feeling completely under the weather. Yeah. Like Coben has guy, COVID. It's, yeah, yeah, he not is. A good thing. He is just the the antithesis of like what we all kind of sort of glean from in terms of storytelling. But that dude is feeling completely under the weather. So that's that's where he's at right now. He is he is lone parent right now that too, that too. Yeah. yeah and so like all this kind of like culminated into this crazy moment of his wife left to go overseas and he like felt super under the weather but this guy would yeah he would do us completely like he would just blows out of the water in terms of talking about characters yeah. i know he really would like that that said we're gonna do our darndest tonight yeah, to, yeah. to tell the story we're trying. and we're make it awesome yeah. um well we're gonna put on our coben hats yeah and uh and explain to you the characters and world of yeah. totally. um first off we want to talk about our heroes our good guys yeah. um and you know these this is our lineup right here we've got doombot and sparky uh we have this is I'm just covering up the next name but i think it's rake yes yep. of course there's rake. rake and then there's stria and screw loose joe um and this is our cast of heroes for season one and we are excited to tell you guys about these guys um to kick it off i think we need to start with our make, yeah, main protagonist main yeah right so coben why don't you start with with rake sure sure <laughs> dylan I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> Dylan. He's already missed. It's uh, fine. It's fine. I'll stuff. do my best. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Rake, Rake is is our um, yeah. He's our young protagonist. Uh, he starts off in a kind of a darker place. Uh, kind of our commentary on the anti-hero coming from my anti-hero back to just hero, which is kind of an interesting. We thought, anyways, an interesting take on that kind of stereotype. But yeah, so he's he's our our main our main guy. Uh, starts out kind of, you know, thinking more along the lines of the hive and through some events uh, throughout the first few episodes. Uh, yeah, he, he kind of sees a different way as, and is yeah, reached out to or spoken to by the Axiom, 
which is, as you find out, a little more special than most characters in this show. So kind of giving him this, you know, little bit of a chosen one arc. Um, but yeah, he's also coming back and learning what 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 is life outside of the Mecha Hive. And yeah. Out of out of the you know that grip of evil, if you will. Yep. You know, so, yeah. I think to add to that, I mean, Rake is. Yeah, he's truly trying to discover who he is in this first season. Right. Raising raised in this world of the Mechno which we're gonna get into and talk more about in a few minutes here. But yeah. um this struggle of of doing the right thing, doing right. what he's called to do, his destiny, if you will. Yeah. And um, you know, it's 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 hard to like for him to get to that place because he's been conditioned his whole life to believe and think a certain way. Right? Totally. Yeah. Opposite, you know, yeah. kind of thing. And I think the thing that I, I've, I've always liked about Rake in, in all of this is that there is definitely the things that he's been conditioned mm. to believe and think about versus like the things that he knows to be true. Yeah. Sure. And so he's grown up in, in this is how it is and then seeing like how it it actually is behind the scenes right that kind of gives him like the like this is wrong yeah but there's so much and i i, I definitely feel like it 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 helped us a lot in terms of um storytelling to to parallel it with moses and the prince of egypt yeah. to where it's like there's that point where he's like yeah, 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 like this is like how it is. Mm -hmm. And then there's a when he kind of becomes like, okay, you're the architect in terms of the prince of, of Egypt. He's down there and he's in the depths and he's and he's amongst the slaves where he kind of is like, oh gosh, like yeah. this is really bad. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's really interesting to me because like you have you have a character that is kind of brought up in this way of thinking and then he actually like sees it firsthand sure and is like this like this is wrong right right, right. um which makes which makes rick's like journey really really interesting to me yeah because uh, he's not just like you know a one uh, note person yes yeah. yes yeah. like super like goody two shoes right or yeah. things, something like that yeah. right yeah um, yeah i think yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, for me, to, just to like take a step back, like I know last last time we talked about kind of how we all met and started got started with this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Rake was the first character, yeah, uh, that I saw that that Dylan had drawn, and I mean, I'm sure you drew all sorts of oh, different yeah. things before that and yeah. whatnot. But, yeah. but Rake was that was always that that character. I was like, man, this guy is cool. <laughs> like, yeah. This guy is really cool, and I want to know more about this yeah. story and this character. And so it's always been about the question I was asked the most when you know someone saw Rake first. Anyways, they were like, "What's going on with his life? Like, right. what's what's the story?" Mm -hmm. Like, it immediately gives you or the viewer, anyone looking at, it, like, "Okay, what's going on there?" Yeah. Like, yeah. obviously something happened to this yeah. kid. What happened? And yeah. Forever, I would just be like, "Ah, uh, you know." You'll find out. Yeah. You know, I was real mysterious about it. Yeah. <laughs> in, the back, in the back half, I'm like, okay, what did happen? Yeah, to what did happen to Ray? Right. Good, <laughs> as that's yeah. what everyone is yeah. asking about. Well, the cool okay. thing is, now we something. know. And now we do. Now we do now have a very... And you'll find out soon enough. Yeah. So. Very cool um, way of you know, how that goes about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, you know, a hero needs a sidekick. And, so, and in our case... Uh, our hero has one and a half sidekicks. So yeah, I like that. It, it's Doombot like and Sparky, and Doombot and Sparky are kind of one and the same. There's a little illustration of them here. This is a little yeah. bit dated, but that's, that's Doombot and Sparky. Oh yeah, you guys, yeah, pull up there. Um, Doombot and Sparky, right there. Yeah, look at those guys. Yeah. Um, so they're kind of they're kind of one and the same. Yeah. Um, Kobe's real adamant about this. He's like, yeah. he's like, they're the same thing. They're they're, they're not two separate. They're not two separate things. Yeah. They're together because Sparky is kind of the service bot for. For Doombot, yeah. yeah. But you know, Doombot needs Sparky desperately mm -hmm. beyond just that, and Sparky needs Doombot too. So, totally. um, this is kind of they're kind of our Laurel and Hardy, right? They're our totally. comedy mm -hmm. comedy duo. Yep. Um, we got a lot of funny moments with this, just the two of these guys alone. Mm -hmm. um, Doombot doesn't really he doesn't really talk. He does he's talk, yeah. but his talks are blips and bloops, and yeah. 
and Sparky's kind of we actually have our linguist, if you will, right, yeah. right, which is a kind of a funny dynamic because they're always bickering. They're always, yeah. you know, if one one's doing one thing, the other is you know picking at them, and yeah, when they're not looking, and it's kind of you know almost. Uh, I'm trying to think. It's kind of like C three P on R two, a little bit, say, like, yeah. but it's a little bit reversed, a little bit. We yeah. hate we hate bringing up that analogy too well, much sure, because it's like sure. you know, there's two robots. Yeah, it's an easy one. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, why don't you talk about more about? No, it? yeah, I I totally agree. I mean, they are totally you know where we start in our story. It's a little heavy. But that quickly, you know, by you know mid mid episode two or so, or yeah. end of episode two maybe, uh, we we quickly get shot into an entirely new world with Rake, and we are you know the first people, people not really yeah. first beings he meets are these two robots who yeah. you know up until this point are the enemy are they're they're not great even in Rake's eyes who is a part of the Mechno Hive he realizes these two robots are not. So yeah. what is you know what's that about? And they are you know they quickly are this mumbling kind of comedic duo that teach him a different way of life. Of yeah. Like there's some levity in this place that seems pretty you know pretty dire. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're they're very much the funny and, he, and Rake's kind of the straight man where he doesn't get the joke ever, and or yeah. he's the butt of the joke. He doesn't even get it because yeah. yeah. he's more robotic than these two robots, yeah. which is our <laughs> exactly. you know yeah. that's right. kind of the well point. because he's been raised by robots, right? Right. Right. So, which I, I really like because I think in terms of the story, most of Rake's interaction up until this point with the robots has been very like this is how it is. It's, mm-hmm. it's very robotic, and with it's with, digital. It's not analog. yes, <laughs> and with and with with uh, Doombot and Sparky, there's a little bit of like because of their separation from it a little bit. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of like them kind of being more, there's a, a human, yeah. a humanistic element yeah. to them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so it's really strange for him because he's been taught this <laughs> way, like for so long. And then when he meets these guys, they're very, they, they have, a, they emote, right. they like with feelings and emotions, and stuff like that. So like, which is, which is crazy to me. Like, I, I kind of love that. They're almost, there's a, there's a sense of like them teaching rake humanity. Yeah. In, yeah. In a mm-hmm. sense, which is really, really cool. Yeah. Because they're not part of the hive, which I know makes no sense to you guys right now, but we're going to get into that yeah. very quickly. Yeah. So, mystery, yes. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the next character, Stria. Yeah. Stria. Stria is a character that's evolved, uh, just yeah. in our storytelling probably, process, oh, probably the most. A I lot, think. weirdly mm-hmm. enough. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, she's, again, one of those characters just like super cool, yeah. right? Like you see her, you're like, okay, this, yeah. this creature is really cool. And so she's a warrior. Mm-hmm. She's uh, kind of a bit of a ranger, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Um, a little fantasy in the year. That's right. Yeah. 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 It's a little <laughs> dash of ranger. Yep. Um, but she is... Uh, her people are called sand sleepers. Sand sleepers. Yeah. And we're going to find out all about them in season one. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's one of the, I don't want to give too much away here, yeah. but I'm yeah. just going to say. We meet them. We meet them. <laughs> and I'm not telling you, say, but they're, it, yeah, she's super cool. I really can't tell you too much more about her because I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to give away too many secrets. She is, she's, she's kind like, of tied up in some cool stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will say Stria plays a very pivotal, vital role in this this first season in helping Rake find out and discover who he is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, and that's <laughs> all I'm going to say because well, I don't want to give it away. I do appreciate like the contrast of of the Mechno Hive, and then I guess what she is in terms of. Um, like her her people mm-hmm. and like what what they are in terms of Zedan and 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 how Zedan they, is the planet by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How they sort of like interact with that, that sort of thing. I don't know. That's I, I feel like we're being super, super Yeah, I know it's kind of but very... it's like it, it, which is kind of exciting, but like yeah. you have the Vecno High that is is almost wanting to uh like take over this planet and then you have Stria and her people that are wanting to be in like harmony with it. Yeah. yeah. And so it's it's a very stark 
contrast with with those two. That's like, a very yeah yin and yang. Yes, good and evil kind of a thing. Which, which sure. is really really cool. Like there's and 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 I I guess like with Rake's journey, having been like uh, brought up in the Mechno Hive, and then you have him meeting Sria and all of that. You you have these very stark um, upbringings, and so like that's really really interesting to me in yeah. terms of like how he is going to evolve as a character in terms of how he was brought up, but how like these people that are native to this planet, and in terms of like other people that were brought to this planet and kind of are overtaking it. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Uh, one thing with with Rake and dealing with Stria, Rake is kind of becomes you know he starts with very much you know in the Bechdel Hive all that stuff, and he be, kind of becomes a student of life where he mm-hmm. learns from Doombot and Spark. He learns levity. He learns you know yeah how to how to make a joke. Yeah, joke. Even his jokes that really hit that well. <laughs> right, right. It's, it's he needs work, yeah. but. Uh, with Stria, you know, she's a different kind of teacher, like Sean was saying, you know, more in the, the realm of the natural world of yeah. Zedon, which is cool because, you know, again, the sand sleepers and where she belongs, they're very in tune with the planet. Yeah. And then I guess our next, our next dude. Yeah, that's a good, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good segue. Screw loose Joe. Screw loose yeah. Joe. Um, you know, we often define him as uh a, a ro- what is that? A rogue? We, we've called him a desert wizard, but we want to yeah. stay away from wizard. Uh, he crazed Dune wizard is what we. Yeah, he we crazed Dune him. wizard, <laughs> but so he doesn't. He it. doesn't possess any powers no. per se as a no. wizard might. But he's uh, he is uh, he's a very wise old soul, despite his his <laughs> craziness. Um, mm-hmm. He kind of goes in and out of of sanity a little bit. Like he's yeah. he's there, but he's been out in the desert for a long time by himself. Yeah. Correct. Talking to rocks. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, but, you know, his best, his best friends happen to be yeah, Dubon Spark. and Sparky. Yeah. And so um, they kind of all discover each other at the same time, Rake, Dubon and Sparky and Screwless. Um, and so there's, there's some, some bonding that happens there and they're, you know, become pretty good friends. Yeah. And, um, you know, Screwless is, He's well connected, and there's more to him than meets the eye for sure. Yeah, and I think that under the layers of of this crazy facade uh, <laughs> lies this very rich character mm-hmm. that, again, kind of um, unfolds as we move along mm-hmm. in, in the seasons of Axiom. Yeah, yeah it's um, kind of a slow burner character, I would say, with his story. Yeah, which is yeah, makes him interesting. Yeah, um, I, it's. He's he's great because he's almost like a a secret Obi Wan Kenobi a little bit a little bit, a little bit. like <laughs> he uh, was Obi Wan and obviously Star Wars I don't know if you guys seen that yeah, yeah I've like, heard of that um, like it's guy. he's definitely like you know immediately he's kind of like okay this guy's the sage but with with Screw Loose he's kind of this like what is wrong with yeah, this guy yeah, yeah, like I don't know what but. He Amongst the the craziness and the chaos, there are nuggets of of truth. Yeah, in, in him, which which I feel like makes him like way more interesting, way more, um, like there's way more depth to him than just like a, yeah. a like a Gandalf it, or a right. or an Obi Wan sort, right. of, sort of character. And honestly, like we'll learn a lot more about him as we move along in the seasons. But yeah. we can't do that without you. And we need your support oh, by going oh, to angels.com forward slash action. Can I do it? Oh there my gosh. Is. Like, yeah. Where you right? Yeah, I love that. Where you That's how I, how I Well, do. like, like I, I think he's he's such a pivotal part of Rick's journey. Yeah. But in in terms of, like, it's it's not well defined. And, like, there mm-hmm. is definitely things in Rick's past that are tied to screw loose but not only just screw loose but like what screw loose is a part of yeah yeah and so that's really we should leave it there though let's yeah, not, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm not gonna, so you're I'm giving too much giving too much more. okay <laughs> um sure. let's talk about bad guys because okay. we can't have good guys without bad guys that's very true we got to have both sides of that that coin so 
our bad guys are real bad. Um, <laughs> there's so bad. no cookie coating it. Um, and I kind of think we need to start off with the main big bad, mm. which is the Mechno Hive. The yeah. Mechno Hive is uh, this hive mind. It's a big thing. Sentient mm. thing yeah. of bots. It's all bots. Yep. Talk about, and, talk yeah. about how, I mean, yeah. this is this was 100% Coben. Yeah, this is baby. this is where Coben so can try seriously. to take the keys, seriously. my friend, and drive very carefully yeah. with your car. <laughs> um, yeah, the the Mechno Hive is. I'm trying to think his his words, but I mean, it is literally anything sent any robot that uh, inhabits Zedon. Uh, and the, it's a strange thing because it's a virus, so it it, it is infected all of these robotic things, all of these beings of, you know, anything from the biggest crazy, you know, construction, construction bot to the tiniest little janitorial little, you yeah. know, mop bot or something. Yeah. It's all the Mechno Hive. And this, this entity can see through every, you know, every eye, every, you know, the cities that are made from the Mechno Hive also are alive as well. So it's like this almost impossible enemy that we start out with, where it's just like, it is everything. Yep. Um, it is, yeah, it's all around our characters in the world. It is the, the main thing that is hunting out any, you know, uh, any of the organics that are left out there in the robotic right. lands. Um, I'll leave it with that. But That's great. That's, I mean, you did good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Coben would yeah. be proud. Thanks. Um, I think with the select, uh, the exception of a select few, minute few sure. bots that are uh, kind of off the grid, if you will. Yep. Um, Dumont and Sparky being two of those, mm -hmm. um, or one of them, however you look to see that. <laughs> yeah, so, true, true. Uh, so yeah, they're the, the Mechno Hive is super menacing, mm -hmm. uh, and they are the ones responsible for bringing Rake into, uh, into their fold. Basically there are essentially there are Egyptians in the story for new parallels yeah, between that yeah. and Exodus, totally. um, Rake gets taken as a baby mm -hmm. by this, <laughs> Another this general, main, yeah, main. Uh, his name's Shogun Sin. And Shogun Sin is, uh, he's, he's a bad dude. He's, he's a bad guy. He is, uh, he's got a lot of, <laughs> a lot of layers to him. Yes. Um, but he is a bad dude for sure. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he, he kind of becomes somewhat of a, a surrogate father yep. to rake, yep. you know, so he raises him and teaches him the ways of the Mechno hive. Right. Um, I think Shogun has been another one of those characters that has evolved over the years and has become much more of a, of a, yeah, yeah developed character. I was like, he was, I think he's also become a quick favorite too. Like, because yeah, kind of like Stria, he, yeah, he's went through some all sorts of transformations yeah. in this character and, his story and I mean where we landed with them I think is going to be a wonderful yeah uh, kind of representation of what he means you yeah know, the kind of what he symbolizes which is really cool yeah I agree <laughs> um, again very cryptic folks but, yeah I know we don't have, this is all stuff we don't want to give away guys <laughs> yeah. so uh sorry I'm do you want to say anything else about <laughs> talking or you about Dr. I mean show like to me like is is really really great because uh I think just the the cards that we're kind of holding back in, in terms of who he is, um, and just a bigger picture of of Rake's journey and um, who he is as well is really really interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like it's there's not much more. We can yeah, say. Like, <laughs> no, it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's very it's cool. like, and you don't want to like give too much away in terms of that but like i really do enjoy the parallels mm -hmm. with rake and and the moses story but also yeah. sin and and kind of who he is and and being that father figure but also kind of still being like really really hard on rake yeah, yeah. He's like, like master I, apprentice yes, at the same absolutely. time as yeah. father son yeah which yeah it's an interesting dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there's Dr. Bantam, who's just oh, plain yeah. crazy. Um, <laughs> he's a genius, but crazy genius. Like he, I mean, it, 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 our inspirations that we pull from are like, <laughs> uh, what, like Igor, right? Yeah. Like, he's guys, like your Frankenstein. Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah. yeah. Body he's, he's a floating head 
that also has all these various weird robotic arms. He has yeah. become he he has been fully assimilated mm -hmm. into the hive. Yeah. Um, we could talk about cyborgs. Yeah. He's responsible for those set he, cyborgs. It's correct. He is responsible for the cyborgs. And yeah. so uh, that is part of his main MO. His main task is to um, assimilate organics into cyborg class if they deserve it, if they are loyal to the mechno. Right. It's kind of their, their servience, if that's the word. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's you have a you know, basic equation of how this works for cyborgs or how they're made or brought into the fold for the hive yeah. that you you're either found or you're you're um, you you know sort of like rake sort yeah. of a found apprentice of like you have promise yeah you, know, you can do well for the hive and what you do to become a cyborg obviously you lose something you lose some you lose sort something. of you lose a leg uh, an arm something people ask why does rake have a claw yeah. leg well right. That's this a little hint. That's your, a little hint. Your ticket in to the hive. That's right. So, Mr. or Dr. Sorry. No, Dr. Bantam. Yeah, Dr. Bantam, not Mr. Bantam. He's Dr. Bantam. For that. So. Cool. Well, uh, this brings us to the part of this show, that which I'm really excited about. We're mm -hmm. going to share with you a brand new video that we created. Um, it's, great. yeah, this is kind of talks about the history. I think it's a good segue because we're going to talk about the world next. Yeah. Um, I know we're we're kind of pushing our, our, our time here, but we're, we, I'd like to dive into the world. Before we do that, we're going to set it up with this video that talks about the history mm -hmm. of our world, which is called Zedan, and shows you where it started and brings you all the way up to where we are today in Rake's story. So can we show that? Okay. Our people came here from the stars. Desperate for a home, Zedan yeah, was once an untouched paradise. Using their advanced the technology now? and the robots, they turned Zedan into that home. And for a time, things were good. Do we restart the Zoom? But something happened to the robots. Yeah, try restarting the Zoom. They started thinking for themselves. Like a virus. Are you hearing audio okay here? Or is it pretty, pretty planet, bad? Linking every robot to a single From. mind. They became what we now know as the Mechno Hive. This okay. evil brood consumed every resource in its path, no, hungry gotta, for energy to, to fuel its survival. Oh, yeah, Eventually, okay. the Mechno Hive discovered limitless power flowing from the heart of the planet, the Axiom. In an effort to protect the Axiom, the here. organics waged war against the, the Mechno Hive, but its forces had grown too strong. In the final battle, the Axiom was destroyed. Are we going? Its pieces uh, scattered check the, the input to the far out, corners of the planet. Okay. Our people lost. Now, we can hear what's left of us are forced to serve the Mechno Hive as it endlessly searches for the lost fragments. You don't, she doesn't have the camera anymore. She doesn't have the white camera. All right. Um, we yeah, we were super excited about that yeah. piece. Uh, sorry, guys, we lost uh, one of our cameras again, but we're gonna get this right next week. Promise. <laughs> <laughs> still new. Still yeah, new. still new. Bear with this, us. this is all new things. <laughs> um, anyway, now I mean that that to us we were really excited about uh, doing. I'm gonna back this up so if we can get all three of us in here. Maybe, 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 maybe. There's we're there. We're there. We yeah, see shoulders. There. Yeah, we see friends. shoulders. Um, so yeah, there, there we go. There it is. It's adorable. <laughs> um, so yeah, that piece that you just saw was something that we have been working on for a while. Um, we were really excited to release that. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, pulling from different inspirations of things that we've seen. You know, the 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 hieroglyphics from yeah. uh, uh, Prince of Egypt. The we opener. just the, how they they show that story and that opens that story. We just were like, man, that's really cool. What if we did our own version of that? Right. What would that look like in our world? You know, what would our ancient temple area look like in these, you know, hieroglyphic kind of illustrations? And so even the beginning of like Lord of the Rings, yeah. like it's kind of gives was, you just yeah. a sense of like 
this is where we're at. Yeah, yeah. this is this is this is, this is our, yeah, this is our world. <laughs> this is um, kind of where we pick up, and yeah. and this is where the organics are. This is where the the robots are, and I like I love it because it's very mysterious, but it also kind of is informative yeah. at, at, this, at the exact same time. Yeah. and you, you kind of pick up in that that world, and not, and not have to really know everything sure for like like right down to the the dot but like it, it at least gives you enough information to where you know where you are yeah mm -hmm. yeah so i mean like going back to the beginning you know the, the video hit on how you know zedon was this kind of paradise this yeah. you know hence the name i mean yeah. i wasn't i didn't stretch too far on that one yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What it, with the Zedon sounds yeah. kind of like Eden, but <laughs> genius but work, it's I know. Zedon with the next. Anyway, um, but but this planet, you know, it was at one time a paradise of sorts, and um, through the uh, infection, if you will, or evil, yeah. the, uh, the virus, the dichotomy, what happened there with the the the, the bots, uh, you know, that they, they overtook everything, and it spread like a virus i don't want to be redundant here but sure. you know that's kind of where our our setting takes place now they are just on this mission the mechno hive i say they the, the mechno hive is on this mission to overtake the planet and overthrow everything mm -hmm. and make everything work for the hive yeah. and, and 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 if you're quote unquote organic or a anything other than the hive it will try to assimilate you into its right use you in some way it's or, web yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, I think another thing to add to that, it's, you know, the, the, the thing it was after, if it, you know, at first it started with resources of the planet, of paradise, if you will. But, uh, yeah, eventually found the one thing that could, um, that could actually sustain it, which was the axiom, which is, you know, very much an important thing in our story. Yeah. yeah. Um, that it, once, you know, this, this war broke out between the organics and the machines, uh, and the the axiom just was destroyed. That is now kind of in the present day. The quest for both sides of this this coin is yeah. to find those pieces. Yeah. Whoever finds them, you know, obviously is in more power than the other. Right. So. Yep. So that's. I mean, that's a great you know, setup to like where we are with Rake, and yeah. you know, Rake at the beginning of season one is going to be tested and tried mm -hmm. in in this capacity of helping. Mechno Hive and helping right. them gain these starts on the wrong team. Yeah. That's right, gain yeah. these crystals, yeah. and, and and he quickly learns yeah. that this is not where he wants to be. But right. um, yeah, they are in terms of uh, an oppressive force. The Mechno Hive is the worst of the worst. They are yeah. wanting to control everybody and anything in on the on the planet. Yeah, and that's their main mission, and they will stop it at, at nothing to make that the case. Looks like we're seeing little snapshots of like Power City, which is yeah. an interesting yeah. uh, setting where, you know, this is essentially where the, the hub or the, the yeah. HQ. Oh, this, this this image in particular, yeah. Um, this is, yeah, that last one. Uh, there, we were, yeah, that right there, good, thank you. Um, you know, when when we've been developing the story, mm -hmm. a lot of this, when, when we kind of landed on this inspiration of what if we were to, um, what if we were to build this more in like the mechno hive was like our egyptians mm -hmm. i mean that that yeah. did evolve over mm -hmm. time it, it was not the initial thought but we thought man this is more and more the story of this really works mm -hmm. and i think this could really work and so this image that you see here is kind of a, an early um concept of what this could look like with the hive and this idea of this pyramid uh and again i don't want to give too much away what this particular image is we'll, we'll yeah. dive more into it but let's just say that uh this is uh, this is essentially the ground zero this is our right. central hub of uh of the hive yeah. and yeah. and it's 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 servants yeah i like the i like the the contradiction or i guess the parallels between the the mechno hives version of perfection versus mm -hmm. like what the organics version of not necessarily perfection but like just life yeah sure sort of things like um 
which is really, really interesting in terms of like man versus machine, right. which is like, I think a, a very um, timeless like storyline. Yeah, you know, totally. If you're yeah. talking about Terminator, if you're talking about The Matrix, right? you know, like what necessarily is like this version of like, this is harmony versus this is harmony. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is, which is really, really interesting. Yeah. Um, and I think that's kind of where our story, um, is and picks mm -hmm. up and, and we try to elaborate more on. Yeah. The, I think that yeah. video that we just saw is definitely more of like this Genesis yeah. story. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but Speaking of Genesis, uh, we're talking about some of the biblical influences here. We already have talked a lot about yeah. the parallels between Moses and, and our main character. You know, we, we want to be really clear that this isn't necessarily a Bible story. This is a right. sci-fi adventure story. Mm -hmm. uh, that's but it's, it is it is strongly influenced by these same themes. It's by, yeah. by, and that's where we're not going to deny that at all. We're gonna, yeah. Uh, you know, say we're, we, we very much so intended it that way. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we talk about Prince of Egypt a lot mm -hmm. in, in our conversations and, you know, parallels and, and influences there. And I think, yeah, I mean, like even this this world, this desert area that we start our show off in, uh, we call it the robotic lands. And the robotic lands, it's kind of this wasteland, if you will. Um, the only things that are surviving out there are these crazy beasts that you'll find mm -hmm. <laughs> later on. Um, you know, again, pulling from inspirations that we love so much, like Dune. Sure. And and what are some other things that we like? Uh, I mean, Dune's a huge one for the whole desert, you know, vibe or yeah. Tatooine. I mean, just playing around with, you know, how Star Wars, one of the great pillars of Star Wars yeah. story is the weird creatures you, our characters come across, whether it's a second or they run across the screen and yeah. that's it, mm -hmm. or they're getting pursued by one Absolutely. or, you know, so it's. It's kind of our playground for yeah is there robots is there creatures yeah. what else is out there you yeah. know so it's just kind of a fun literal sandbox of <laughs> oh yeah. we get we have some fun stuff in store for it but. oh gosh yeah it's gonna be really cool mm -hmm. um i think that kind of wraps up our our yeah. characters and world guys um again like you guys although this is a dream for us to come true and uh we are expressing it just right now so Again, that link is angel.com forward slash axiom. Um, please, you know, if you're interested in supporting this and um, being a part of it and yeah. being in investing, um, you know, the, please respond there and express interest. Express yes. interest, please. Because yeah. uh, <laughs> we, we would love to make the show a reality, um, you know, and we're obviously super jazzed about it. Mm -hmm. And we'll continue to kind of get, tell you guys more and more about the story and, I think the next episode we're going to talk more about our influences yeah. mm -hmm. a little heavier. Hopefully, Coben will be back and yeah. and uh, fully operational by that point, <laughs> totally, uh, totally. like the Death Star. Um, <laughs> wow! <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, full circle. Um, but yeah, we miss you this time around, Coben. If you're you're tuning in, um, we'll hope to have you next time, and you can definitely help us with that, like contri yeah. contributing yeah. to your yeah. ideas and whatnot. But totally. at this, this point, I'd love to open it up some questions and uh, maybe even circle back around to the first question I asked you. What are some shows and what are some things that you guys remember growing up that you're yeah. like, okay, this is cool. Like, we were really into this. Let's see. Let's, let's see. see. Let's see. What are you talking about here? Coben's. Oh, here we go. Who is each of your favorite character and why? Ooh. Oh, okay. Man. That's a okay. A big question. That Shannon. is a good question. <laughs> um, I mean, for me, I'm just going to be real boring and say Rake because oh, I, I think I've drawn that kid's face billions of times at this yeah. point and just, you know, all kinds of ideas for him and what, what he's going to go through in this story. And yeah, so I mean, I'm, that's a boring answer, but yeah. No, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a good one. I mean, Rake, Rake yeah, is I, a hero. I know. For, for me, I think it's Sin. Mm -hmm. Sin's got a lot going on that. We're gonna find more and more about. Yeah, he's um, real cool. He's real cool. <laughs> cool dude. Even though he's he's bad, but he's, he's cool. real bad. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think for me, it's it's like obviously Rake is kind of the top. Yeah, but also there is definitely sin in terms of like. I think we more so probably find out about who he is later. Sure. In terms of like 
like face value when we meet him. Right. Which is really interesting to me because like you're like this guy is just he seems horrible. horrible. Like, yeah, what's, right. what's going on? Right. And I feel like more so in in terms of like flashbacks mm-hmm. and maybe memories, like Rake, I think uh, starts to realize who Sin actually was. Yeah. yeah. And like in terms of his life, sure. which is really really interesting to me. Yeah. He's yeah. by um, far a very complex, dude. very he complex, is. and he trying is. trying to to navigate and balance everything that's kind of going on in terms of this world yeah. and and what's been created and what's been um, kind of like dealt out to sure. to them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like I do, but I do I I love Rake because <laughs> I mean obviously he's the main character, but I think that there is such an interesting like, um, like we talked about last week, a a victim of circumstance. Yeah, like seeing like this is this is your world, and yeah. it. And this is how you sort of are operating within that world. But then when you get deeper into that world, you're like, oh my gosh, like this is horrible. And having to choose like, and having to really, really choose like, I I don't want to be a part of this. Like this, this is not, even though this is how this works, I choose to kind of go against the grain, which is very difficult right for a hero to do sure, yeah. sure and so i think that that's what makes rake so appealing in that way because it's like an impossible task exactly kind of, yeah, especially in this world yeah. exactly set in this world anyway. exactly <laughs> like I, I i yeah i mean that's i think what what we really glean from moses and yeah. um even just the prince of egypt was like there's that moment where he's like he's fine he's like he's a all good. Yeah, yeah. He's like, this is great. Like, whatever. And then they're like, hey, you're an architect of 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 Egypt. And he gets down there, and it's like, oh my gosh, like yeah. this is horrible, right? Yeah. And and that's where I like, I feel like Rake really sort of gleams from those yeah. those parallels, and I'm 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 really interested to see like where that journey goes. Yeah, yeah. I agree. As I am. Yeah. <laughs> uh, any more questions? Yes. Yeah. See if there's any more. Right. Is Rake a human? And how did you come up with the name Rake? Right. Ooh. Oh, so I mean, one. he is very much human. I would say yeah. they're all under this. We we kind of take a Star Trek approach where at this in our story, most organics are not just humans. They're all sorts of aliens. So we can have some fun. You know, we have yeah. this whole sandbox of weird creatures that we can come up with but again all under the guise of organic um for the i'm trying to remember how i came up with his name i'm not gonna i don't i don't have some funny quip for this (laughs) uh i think it was literally i was kind of i mean just you know like he's like like, (laughs) he started out as an outlaw i know i can tell you this much and from there i was like okay well what's i mean i always like to like choose names that are you know, they're somewhat familiar, but it could have a sci-fi yeah. feel. Yeah. And I feel like that was like, people know what a rake is. I mean, it's not some <laughs> yeah. cool thing, but I was just like, but as a name, a, it's cool. As yeah, an edge to it. It really is. And yeah. that's kind of what, you know, when I created, you know, his character and I was working on like, oh, he has this robotic leg with these talons, these like sharp things, like he's yeah. an edge to him. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, well, what's something that literally sounds like has like a sharpness and Rake. That it's might great. be my best answer for that. <laughs> it's a good answer. There you it's go. More than I would come up with. So, that's for sure. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Love right. the sound music design. Have you guys chose a composer yet? Ooh. Tron Daft Punk Fives. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. What are these? What's <laughs> Tron? Yeah. I don't know what that is. Things we're so near and dear, and dear to us here, guys. Yeah, we know. love. Oh yeah, and your and your hype just has the cut off there. Oh, nice. so he's hyped. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, Carlos, Let's thank you. It. Yeah, I, honestly, like um, Tron is an Dude. awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know why we haven't brought that up yet. That's perfect. We all we love Tron, both the original and the the, the reboot and um, the cartoon and, and the, the cartoon. cartoon was maybe most. You guys, if you haven't yeah. watched the cartoon yet, watch that cartoon. Yeah. It came out what, how many years ago? Like five, six years ago. Yeah, something? it was. It was kind of this like. Oh my gosh! It's they, so cool. as, at the same time the movie was coming out, there was this like amazing series that was coming out, and it was just 
I mean, if not as good as the movie, right? Like it was amazing. It's so good. It's uh, it's the artwork and the style of animation is so cool. So cool. It's great. I, and in terms of Daft Punk, yes, like that's <laughs> that's we're we're putting together the ideas and how do we have a composer? We actually are in the works with of talking to mm. uh, a couple different composers right now, and uh, we have some. Uh, it gets when we have it all locked in, we'll be excited to share some with credits too. Yeah, because yeah. it's yeah. It's, it's, cool. it's cool. It's really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, Daft Punk is definitely inspiration for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's on the list of of things we like to. We'd like to hear in the soundtrack and, oh, yeah. and moving forward. We definitely uh, reference Tron and Stranger Things in terms yeah, of like yeah. soundtrack. Yeah, like it's synths. just this eighty yes. cents. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was, I mean, literally today as we're we're, <laughs> it's like we're it's almost finishing enough. music yeah, for yeah. the temple scene, it was like it was a couple of tracks, yeah. and one was very much in that vein and we were just kind of trying to slide like they're both amazing Yo, sure, yeah. tracks but like one of them just felt like this is the direction that we want to go yeah, yeah. with axiom yeah, yeah and versus the other one and not that it was like a horrible track it was just no it was hard was, actually yeah, really hard it, it was very it was like oh gosh they but, both but this sound one sounds more daft punk yeah, yeah right yeah. and it was like very like very synthy and it, it was really amazing and it like there was a lot of elements that kind of played into it with like the voiceover, the, right. the visuals yeah. and things like that, which thank you, Katie Cologne, like yeah. who is, it was just an amazing voiceover talent and, yeah. and friend. And it was, yeah, I don't know. Like we had a lot of tough decisions in that and music for some reason, I feel like it always it's like, tough. it's, it's super tough. It kind of yeah. locks it in and that's the last yeah. little part of it. And you're like, yeah. all right, is this the, is this Yes, it? yes. Because there's, there's, there's a feeling have, you yeah. have, you've created these visuals, you've yeah. created this aesthetic yeah. and you want something that matches and, and, and really like emphasizes what you've created. Yeah. yeah that's and, good. and, uh, it, it, it's hard. Yeah. I got to go time for one more question. One more. Let's see. What do we got? Warshark, cool name. Oh yeah, hello. That's the coolest hello. name ever. Some ways you plan to make your. Oh boy, I can't read that. Yeah, it's tiny. Uh, hidden behind uh, this. Some ways. Hang on. Sorry, we're trying to read it right now. Uh, there's this thing in the way. There, there it is. Here's watchable. Oh, some ways you planned. Mm, my last name, really? Legacy. Oh man, that's that's great. Well, we do have, I mean, kind of some stuff we were teasing and talking about with characters. I mean, our characters go through some intense journeys. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some quite a bit of like, yeah, transformations yeah. throughout our, our yeah. story. I mean, this is a story as in not just season one, but the whole the whole thing. Um, yeah, there's yeah, a this lot. It's a great of, question. Yeah, this like, is like, really good. Like, here's the thing. Like, we we want to make a show that we would want to watch. We want our kids to watch. And that we'd want to watch repeatedly mm-hmm. to be honest like right. and so and we have again we this is the, the conversations that we have in this office all the time mm-hmm. and part of that is like like yes we want to have cool artwork yes we want to have these awesome action sequences yes we want to like show this sweeping world but at the core of it we really want to tell a, a, a compelling story mm-hmm. and we want to tell a story that uh can resonate with not just kids, but adults, families, right? Um, something that we can all walk away getting something out of that's, you know, meaningful. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, it's something we all talk about too. It's like we, you know, with most, most kids cartoons, there's, there's a few out there that do an yeah. amazing job of having this like epic, this truly epic mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, there, the other flip side of it is very episodic, which is great. There's some really good examples of that, but Something we are all fans of is like yep. we love Lord of the Rings, we yeah. love Star Wars, we love these epics, and this is our version of that. And you know, there's moments where we, you know, we'll watch something and we're like, you know what, we didn't really like how that played yeah. out. Yeah. And you know what, let's direct all of that yep. and try to figure out something in Axiom that we're like, we want to maybe tackle that subject, but do it our way or do it better. Yeah. Or what we thought yeah. was better. Yeah. It's a cool sounding board. You know, what a weird thing to say, but it's like a sounding board to like Absolutely. stuff we're watching and intaking for our creative, you know, fuel. Yeah. And we say that all the time. Yeah. Like, How do we make this better? How would we have made that right. yeah. you know, episode of whatever? And Sean's kind of the one who, who champions that notion of like, well, let's just focus it in action. <laughs> like, let's not sit here and complain. Like, sure, we can, but then let's actually be productive. 
I yeah. love it. I you love know? it because we, with all the stuff that we, we love slash hate, yeah. it is, it's one of those things <laughs> where we were like, okay, that Star Wars like movie was horrible. <laughs> like, <laughs> how do name we, names. how do we take, yeah, like we're not going to say anything, <laughs> but how do we take that and, and, and fuel it into Axiom? Yeah. Right. And I am like, I'm, that question is amazing yeah. because I am, I, I rate movies and shows mm. in terms of like, am I going to watch that again right, and enjoy yeah. it? Right. Yeah. In the like, olden days, would, would you buy the DVD? Exactly. Like, yeah, like, like, that's like, what, am oh, I going to yes. download yeah. that and watch it a million times? Right. I'm like, that's what I want that's with Axiom. Striving for like, that's what I want that. with like, people like watch it once and be like, this is great. I'm going to go back and I'm going to start from the beginning and watch it all over again. And I'm going to pick out those things that yeah. I didn't see the first time. Yeah, that's yeah. My I didn't favorite. like that, that character arc that I didn't necessarily like take a whole lot from. I'm seeing way more depth into yeah. it now. See a different light. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like, and I, and I, like, I think that that's every sort of filmmaker or creative, mm -hmm. like, their passion like you want to create layers where it's not just like okay like i've watched this once and that's great yeah. you want us you want to create something where people go back to it and and see something that maybe they didn't see before right and i, I honestly like not to to whatever but i do think that there are layers to the axiom chronicles that are are very special yeah that i think that that could definitely reach beyond like just like a one viewing oh, uh, yeah. sort of thing and oh, like yeah. that's what i love about it yeah. like and that's what i think we're so passionate about it's not just something that we're just like we want to create something because we want to create something we want to create something because we are so passionate about it yeah, yeah. and we, i'm going to say for for i think for for all of us it's you know about the show we want our kids to watch you know yeah, yeah. that's and huge I think part of it I think that's part of the legacy is like passing this on to the next generation and yeah. like watching it with them. I think that's, that's a big part of it. So yeah, we're at the one hour mark guys. We should probably wrap this up. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Um, we hope that you will be part of this project. Remember you can go to angel.com forward slash axiom to express interest. Um, be sure to uh, stay caught up on all the latest project updates by following us on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, and along with any exciting, uh, exciting updates with the show please share it with your friends and family yeah. um thank also you. also real quick just like just so you guys know like we're part of a family right now like the angel studios is like the super awesome network there is another like the animated, animated series, series yeah. going on yeah. called gabriel yeah. and the guardians like they have some super awesome animation like the stuff that we've seen it's like wow like we're like now that we just like, hey, like, well, I mean, honestly, like, if you have to choose between one or the other, but no, 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 it's not a competition. But no, no, like, no, no. like both, guys, both, Sean, both. guys, like, literally, like, if you guys, if you guys look at 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 these two things and like, but those guys are going on and they've got some great, yeah, great check them out animation for sure. and story going on. So check those guys out. Like, yeah. they are doing some really, really awesome stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, all that to say. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us tonight, guys. Yeah. Uh, I think we might rerun the temple uh, Ooh, yeah, animation yeah. just to close Let's this out. Watch that again. But thank you so much for joining us. Uh, stay tuned for updates and the next live stream. Cool. See you guys, guys later. Our people came here from the stars. Desperate for a home, Zedin was once an untouched paradise. Using their advanced technology and robots, they turned Zedin into that home, and for a time, things were good. But something happened to the robots. They started thinking for themselves. Like a virus, they spread across the planet, linking every robot to a single mind. They became what we now know as the Mechnohive. This evil brood consumed every resource in its path, hungry for energy to fuel its survival. Eventually, the Mechnohive discovered limitless power flowing from the heart of the planet, the Axiom. 
In an effort to protect the Axiom, the Organics waged war against the Demekno Hive, but its forces had grown too strong. In the final battle, the Axiom was destroyed, its pieces scattered to the far corners of the planet. Our people lost. Now, what's left of us are forced to serve the Mechno Hive as it endlessly searches for the lost fragments of the Axiom.